Stop asking me what programming languages I know. If you ask me this question, I assume either that you're a beginner programmer or that you don't know much about programming at all, because it's not a question that experienced programmers often ask each other. So if you're confused why I'm telling you not to ask this question, or you think this question is completely normal, then get out. But actually stay, because this video is directed precisely to you, precisely to those people who might not understand why this question is weird. And I'll try my best today to explain it from the perspective of an experienced programmer. So, despite the aggressive title, I'm a teacher. And actually, I understand completely where this question comes from. My name is Lewis. I'm a person who worked at Google for four years in security and machine learning before I became an instructor at programming boot camps around the world. And if you're more interested in this type of programming education stuff, don't forget to subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter. But with that being said, let's dive right into today's question, which I will actually answer with what programming languages I know at the end of the video. So feel free to watch until the end. So the first reason why this question is strange is that for higher level programmers, the languages that we supposedly know has no relevance on what we're able to do. So I'll explain this more concretely in a second, but another way to say this is that in our perspective, programming languages are simply a tool, but they're not really a skill in itself. So an example would be my last manager at Google who did a PhD in physics before he came to Google, and during that time, as far as I know, he didn't do any web programming. He did mostly Python, Python notebooks, simulation, you know, this mathy physics -y stuff. But when he came to Google, he was put on the web search team, despite never having done web programming in his life. So why did they do that? It's because, as I mentioned, at this level, it's not about what programming languages you supposedly know, but it's more about your capacity to learn. And, you know, search is a pretty important product, right? But still, my boss, who has no experience in web programming, is placed on this team. And I can guarantee you 100% that he did a good job on that team. Because it doesn't matter what languages he knows. And tying that back to the original question, when you ask an experienced programmer what languages they know, you know, my reaction or their reaction is kind of like, uh, why does it matter? Because I'll just learn ones that I don't know. So another example, again, in a very similar vein, is the last time I switched teams at Google, they used C++. And I'd used C++ maybe once, five years prior to switching the team, and I'd done some C in my life as well, but I, I can't say that I had really used a lot of C++ at that time. And when I switched teams, they were simply, they never even asked me, do you know C++, etc. They just said, okay, on this team we're using C++, right? And almost that nonchalant, attitude is what I'm trying to communicate to you is that at a certain level of programming, it's not really about whether someone knows the language or not. They probably have a certain foundation that they can learn this language quickly. And that language is simply just a tool. And it's true. I had no trouble. Let's say two, three weeks, I was writing code as any of my other teammates were. I'm not saying that I knew every single in and out of C++, but the point is, if you're relating what languages someone knows to what they're able to achieve, it's a bit of a misconception from that perspective, and that's what makes the question strange. Now, the second reason that this question for me is a bit off is because the concept of knowledge of a language is a bit hard to define. And that's what I would ask you, the viewer, right now. What, what does it mean, in your opinion, to know a programming language? Does it mean that I know every single detail? Does it mean that if you ask me right now, I could write code completely in that language without using any resources, without using any stack overflow? Because I'll give you a flip side, again, another story. Let's take the language OCaml, a, functionally str a functional strongly typed language, which I haven't used for seven years since university. But in my opinion, if you gave me three hours to sit down with OCaml, read some code, try to solve some problems and get warmed up, I would still be able to use it again, probably at a level that would be good enough to work as a software engineer. But if you sat in front of me this very second, across from me, behind this camera, and you asked me, hey, do you know OCaml? I would actually be a little confused what to answer because you could ask me a feature about the language of OCaml right now, and I promise you, I would get the answer wrong. I don't know. I don't remember, dude. It was, it's been seven years since I touched this language, but somewhere in the back of my head, I still have that knowledge and I'd be able to pick it up quickly. Because it's quite normal in a programming career that a programmer every one or two years, let's say, switches languages or switches tools or frameworks. 
But does that mean they don't know the last frameworks they used? Because the truth is we're humans, we forget things. I don't remember every single language or tool I've used on the spot right now, but if you ask me, I could pick it up again. So it's very hard for me tying this back to the question. When you ask me what programming languages do you know, I don't know, should I just name everything that I could potentially relearn quickly? Should I only name the things that I used recently because I have so-called knowledge of them fresh off the top of my head? In that sense, it's quite difficult to answer this question. And another reason why this question to me is strange, because the concept of knowledge of a language is not super well defined, especially as we examine this temporally with the passage of time in someone's programming career. So the third thing I'll say about this topic is that after you've used enough languages, they all seem quite similar. Now, I'm not saying that every programming language is the same. They're very different. They have very different applications. They have their strengths and so on. But as I mentioned before, when I was talking about learning new programming languages quickly at Google, you know, these programming languages all have certain common constructs. So I'll just explain from my personal perspective how I think about programming languages, which is that they all, you know, when I think about it, I probably think, okay, they probably all have some type of list some if conditions, some for loops, maybe a while loop, these types of constructs that appear very frequently across almost every programming language, except weird ones like BrainFuck or something. Uh, if you don't know BrainFuck, you can Google BrainFuck. That's the name of the language. Uh, but that's more like a meme language, right? But the thing I'm trying to say is, Again, programming languages are just a tool. And of course, some languages have types, some languages require you to manage memory. But once you've used languages in these different categories, then when you try to use a new language, you kind of think, oh, okay, I've seen this part of the language in another language I've used. I've seen this part in another language that I've used, right? And so it's not really a big deal. It's just, you know, looking it up and trying to remember which constructs and navigating which features are specific to that language. Again, I'm not claiming that within one day or something, I can become the super expert, know every syntax or every quirky feature of a language. But still, in general, it's enough to implement things with example code. A good parallel, in my opinion, would be with spoken languages. So spoken languages in general are much harder to learn. But for example, when I think about spoken languages, I know that every language or probably every language has a way to express desire. I want blah, blah, blah. Every spoken language has a way to express ability. I can do this, or has a way to command someone, do this for me, type this for me, right? And in the same way with programming languages, even if I've never used this language, somewhere in my head, because of my experiences with other languages, I know that probably there exists some way for me to solve a problem or some construct, the most obvious ones, like I mentioned before, being for loops, if conditions, and so on. So hopefully that summarizes nicely these three points. Why when you ask someone, what programming languages do you know? It's a strange question. And instead I'll suggest to you some better and more sensible questions you might ask, right? If someone asked me, what programming languages have you used recently? What programming languages are you using for your current project? What programming languages do you prefer to use? Or what programming languages do you think are most appropriate for this application? These are all questions that I don't find strange at all, by the way. But the specific question of what programming languages do you know, whenever I'm asked it, I kind of have to think hard about how to answer because fundamentally there are things that are very strange about this question. So I promised one other thing, which is at the end of this video, I would read to you a list of what programming languages I quote know. And hopefully now you understand why I put this in quotes, but I've gathered a list of languages that I've used on different projects, work projects, research projects, pet projects. Uh, maybe I've done an assignment with them at some point. And again, this list probably isn't exhaustive. Uh, I've been coding a little over 10 years and I'll pull up the list on my other screen here and I'll read it. So without further ado, that is C, C++, JavaScript, Java, Scala, Python, TypeScript, OCaml, Haskell, Racket, Ruby, MATLAB, Objective-C, Dart, PHP. And like I mentioned, I've probably forgotten stuff, and most of this stuff I haven't touched in four or five years. And so it's very difficult for me to say if I know it, but hopefully, as you've gathered from the video, if I was asked to work in these languages, it's like, to me, it's whatever, it's fine. I'll pick it up again in a little bit. But while looking for this, I wanted to end with one last interesting thing, which is as I was kind of looking at past projects I've worked on to prepare this list, I found this blog post 
that I had saved as a university student. And this blog post is titled, Why You Shouldn't Learn to Code by Jeff Atwood. And Jeff Atwood is one of the creators of Stack Overflow. Yeah, that's pretty badass, right? Like this dude literally created Stack Overflow, which millions, I don't know, billions of programmers across the world are using. And in this article, there's a quote that's actually touches and is very relevant to the topic that we're talking about. And this post was written in 2012, 2013. And that quote, quote is that software developers tend to be software addicts who think their job is to write code, but it's not. Their job is to solve problems, right? And there's many interpretations of this quote. One of the interpretations that I'm offering today is that it's not really about the code or programming language. It's about the general problem solving code. Uh, problem solving skills, sorry. And the code itself is just a tool to achieve that. So with that being said, I hope that today's video made you think a little bit more about this topic. So if you're an experienced programmer, if you learned something about this question, or you're still confused why this question is strange, please leave a comment below. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.